In this video, we're going to talk about testing and split testing. Now, typically when you hear marketers talk, they say you should split test everything, but there's actually a bunch of reasons why you shouldn't split test things. We'll talk about that and we'll talk about split testing and how to really approach it for your business. So let's get into this video. Hey there everybody, my name is Brandon Brashears. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I create daily digital marketing videos here. I talk about everything from optimization and conversion rate optimization to social media marketing, to pay-per-click ads, to email marketing, to basically everything related to digital marketing. So if you're looking to grow your business with digital marketing, please consider subscribing here. And if you enjoy the video, give it a thumbs up. If you ever have any questions or comments or need help with anything, please don't hesitate to comment below and I'm happy to help give advice and other things like that. So be sure to comment and say hello in the comment section. All right, so let's talk about split testing. And a lot of times you'll hear marketers say you should split test everything. There's actually situations where you shouldn't split test things. Actually, what you should be doing is fixing it. And there's a hierarchy of needs that are going to help you to determine should you just fix the problem or should you split test the problem? So let's get into this. So the first thing that you have to think about and the bottom level of the hierarchy is, is your content or site functional? You have to have function in order to have traffic. So if your website is not even working, if the page doesn't load, if the site doesn't load on mobile, if it's not functional, you just have to fix it. This is pretty self-evident but it's a situation where you shouldn't test. Oh, should we have a mobile friendly version or should we have a, a standard non-mobile friendly version? It has to be mobile friendly. If it doesn't function properly, don't test it. It's going to work better. Just fix it. This is a no brainer. It's very simple. It's easy to understand why this is true. Next, it has to be accessible. You have to allow people to access it. And if it's not there, if it's not functional and you can't read it, or if you can't see it, if the server's going down constantly, if the pages are loading so slowly that people just bounce and exit, it's not gonna be helpful for them. So it has to be first functional, then it has to be accessible. Next is usable. So if it's not able to be used, it's trash and garbage. So like all of these things, it has to be to this minimum level before you even start considering running a split test. So if, for example, the buttons don't work well on mobile device, if they hang over off the page, if they're not clickable, if the form fields don't work, especially on mobile. A lot of these problems are mobile related. So um, you want to make sure that your site is really mobile friendly. And if you don't have these basic foundations set up, you're going to be in big trouble and you're going to see a huge drop in conversion and it's just going to be pointless to run traffic to your site. So don't let this happen to you. Let's talk about the two things that you should consider fixing now. So I'm sorry, testing. So we've talked about things that if it's not functional, if it's not accessible, and if it's not usable, you just have to fix it. There's no reason to split test it. It's going to work better every single time you fix that. So go and fix that. Don't even ask if you need to run a split test. There's two elements that you're going to need to test though. So the first one is, is it intuitive? And this is a user like design type feature. So are people understanding how to flow through your site? Um, will changing the, the logo to a clickable link that goes to the home page be more functional? Will people have a better um, understanding of how to move around on your website? Will changing the menu location or changing the menu items make conversion go up? These things help you to determine, and you, you don't know unless you test these things. But as long as the site is usable, at this point we start to say, okay, how can we improve the experience of the people on the website? How can we reduce friction and how can we increase conversion? And what is kind of the best layout to do that? For intuitive, this matters a lot for mobile apps. It matters a lot for websites. Uh, a lot of times people, especially older people, they won't know how to use, um, if the letters like a three dots or you have symbols that are for menus or menu items or things are hidden in weird places. If it's not super explicit, you will have friction in that conversion process and you're gonna lose traffic. So it's always good to make sure that the site is very intuitive to use. The thing that I like to do, and since I have little kids, this works well, is I give my four-year-old the phone. She can't read well yet, so it's like, can she maneuver on this? It's amazing what kids can do without having to read. They can basically use any app. My four-year-old can use Pinterest really well, which is interesting. So that's very intuitive and easy to use. It's designed so that you don't have to read. You don't have to go and do a lot of work. You know how to use it 
once somebody's shown it to you or you can figure it out really, really quickly. So intuitive is important and that's an element that you need to be testing. So is it easy to use? Now you can, this is a qualitative, um, a lot of times measurement. So you can ask people, you can use tools like Crazy Egg, which is a heat map tool. So you can see how people engage on your site by using tools that are qualitative to see what their experience is like. And heat map tools are great for this. Um, surveys are great for this. Asking friends and family is also a good way to get info on, does this seem like it would work well? Once you have something that you think would work well, test it against the original version and see which one gets better time on site and use that quantitative data once you have the test up and running. All right, at the top of this list is persuasive. So that's things like copy or button text or video or using you know video or using written word. So you want to make the website as persuasive as possible, um, but you're not sure until you test it what message is gonna work best, what headlines are gonna work best. You should always be working to improve these kind of elements. So adding tests, um, you need to make sure that you're gonna be able to get a lift in conversion that's gonna be measurable, that's gonna be within the... Uh, so there's tons of tools out there to help with A-B split testing. And I would suggest adding and testing only one element at a time. If you're adding, for example, let's say you change a bunch of things on the website all at once and test it, you're not gonna be able to pinpoint which elements specifically made a difference. So when you're testing, only test one thing at a time, run enough data through so that you can get a st statistically significant data point and really say, okay, this item attributed to, you know, 5% lift in conversion rate. And so we're going to go with this one. So those are the tips. If you have a website, I would love to know, do you think you have elements that you just need to fix or you consider testing? A lot of times people say test everything, but the truth is sometimes you should just get your content out there and just get it going, especially if you have not too many no, not too much traffic. It's going to be hard to get data that is statistically significant to really say, okay, this one's a winner. So I hope this was helpful for you. If you ever have any questions, comments, need help with anything, please don't hesitate to reach out by commenting below. And if you like this video, be sure to subscribe. I'll see you on the next video. Have a great one.